let this be a normal field trip with a friend? No way! Cruising on that main street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Yeah. Next thing that you know, you see it. Yeah. Octopus in the neighborhood, surfing on the sine wave, swinging through the stars. Yeah. Take a left at your intestine, take your second right back more to the magic school bus. Navigator Nostrum, climb on the magic school bus. Make a plane turn to the Time for class. Where's Tiffany? Is she absent? She was practicing archery, Mrs. Frizzle. Miss Frizzle, ow, my knee hurts. I can't walk. Miss <laughs> Frizzle, I think she took an arrow to her patella. Let nope. me put some ice on her tibia first. Nope, this is great. We're going to have a bone-tastic day. Whee. Oh, 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 we were here yesterday, weren't we? Yes, we were. Even though we were in a different person's body system, they still look very similar. Before we begin, we should discuss why bones are so important. You need your bones for... Oh, I know this. Bones are important because they provide support for your body. They store minerals like calcium and also produce red blood cells in the red bone marrow. Bones protect tissues and organs and provide leverage for the skeletal muscles to pull on. I did my homework, Miss Frizzle. Oh, well, that wasn't homework, but I'm glad you know all of that. Good job using your cranium. <laughs> Anyways, let us continue. Bones don't only support your body, you know. They pr help protect your internal organs as well. Also, it is important to remember that your axial skeleton contains the spine and the head, while the appendicular skeleton contains all of the appendages. Don't get them confused. Here's a long bone. At the top, you can see articular cartilage, and then beneath that, there's cancellous bone, which is also known as spongy bone. Beneath this is the epiphyseal plate, which is also known as the growth plate. <coughs> in the center is the marrow cavity, and on the outside of the bone is the periosteum. In between those two is compact bone. Hey, I know what that bone is. Is that the patella? That is correct. What we are observing right now is a broken, pate broken patella. After all, she has been struck by an arrow there. Does anybody know how it works? Oh, whoa. I know, I know. The gliding joint. There are, there are other types of joints, too, around the body, like the hinge joint or the saddle joint. I don't get how it works, though. Well, a gliding joint has relatively flat bones moving across one another. A hinge joint is like the opening of a door. It allows a joint to move up and down. Pivot joints allow for rotation only, like turning your head from side to side. An ellipsoidal joint is an oval-shaped joint with depression in one of the bones. It allows for angular movement of both of the bones. Saddle joints fit like a rider and saddle and permit angular motion but not rotation. Ball and socket joints have a rounded head of one bone that rests within a cup-shaped depression in another bone which allow for all combinations of movements. Does anybody know what bones we are on top of now? Well, I think the tibia is directly under us, which means the fibula is below that. Correct. Good job. Notice as we drive on a ligament as we go on to the next bone. Ligaments are connective tissue that connect a bone to a bone. There is also another type of connective tissue called tendons that connect bones to muscles. Now we are going to turn around and take a trip along the largest bone in the whole body. Oh, is that the head? No, the head, which is the skull, is made of many bones. The largest bone is the... Oh, my glenoid fossa. That's the femur. It's so long. Also, take note of the periosteum. It is the outer membrane that protects the bone. This is why we can drive over Tiffany's bone without damaging it. By the way, do you know what type of bone we are on now? Oh, oh, I know. It's hard and smooth and, um, it's really dense and there's a lot of it. I think the name of it starts with a C. Oh, oh, it's c c compact bone, and oh yeah, it makes up about 80% of the total bone mass of a person. Okay, everyone, hold on tight. It's going to get rather bumpy in a moment as we get closer to the poor spongy bone in the femoral head. Why, Miss Frizzle? Isn't bone supposed to be smooth? Oh no, you silly child. Only the outside is smooth. The inside of the bone is made of spongy bone. It is less dense than compact bone and has more surface area. Therefore, it is also more porous. Ew, it smells like metal all over the place. Miss Frizzle, isn't that because we are on the red bone marrow where blood cells are made? Oh yes, you are so intelligent. Now kids, do you know the scientific term for blood cell production? If you get this right, I'll give you a prize. 
Uh, I think it's hemopoiesis. There's also another type of bone marrow called yellow bone marrow. Yellow bone marrow is stored in the medullary cavity of long bone. What was the medullary cavity again? What do you think it is? It sounds like a place where things are stored. That is correct. The medullary cavity, cavity stores only red bone marrow in babies. But as the child grows into an adult, the red bone marrow slowly becomes yellow bone marrow. Now, watch closely since you refuse to eat all the time. Hmm, it's only yellow bone marrow. Why do I have to pay such close attention? Well, that's because yellow bone marrow stores reserve fat. When the body doesn't have energy, as a last resort, it pulls the stored fat from the yellow bone marrow. It also turns into red bone marrow when someone loses a lot of blood. That is why you should eat more. As we pass by, notice the blobby things that are sliding by. Does anybody know what those are? Oh, I know. They create and destroy bone. It's an osteoclast, blast, site, er, I think... Yes, those are right. Don't osteoclasts destroy bones? I think the term for it is osteolysis. It does its job by releasing acids and enzymes that dissolve the bone and release stored minerals to reabsorb them. I think it helps regulate calcium and phosphate as well, right? Mm. Hey guys, look, look, look. I see an osteoclast. Oh, I see. They promote calcium deposit in the bones. And look, osteogenesis. Do you see that new bone being produced? Oh, I see. They promote calcium deposit in the bone. Yes, that is all right, kids. Do you also know that when the osteoblasts are completely surrounded by calcified matrix, it becomes an osteocyte? Ms. Frizzle, what's an osteocyte? They are mature bone cells that maintain bone structure and repair bones so you don't become like that formless blob out there. Oh, I noticed these big circular things. What are they? That is an osteon, the basic functional unit of a bone. Bone cells are arranged in circular units, which is the osteon. Also, if you look carefully at the center of this osteon, there is an opening. This is called the haversian or central canal, which contains blood vessels. If we keep driving up the femur, we'll pass through synovial fluid, which is in between jo joints before we reach the pelvis. Yes, in fact, we are now on the right coxal bone. If you look closely, you can see where the femur articulates with the pelvis. This allows the rotation of the joint here. So you can walk. Yes, that movement is essential for walking. Look out the window, kids. We are now crossing from the ilium over to the sacrum, which forms the middle of the pelvis. In females, the opening below the sacrum is much wider because... Because of babies! Women need to have enough room for babies to pass through this area. Right again. Okay, kids, the bus is now driving on top of the vertebrae. The human body has 24 vertebrae, which can be classified as cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. The vertebrae protect the central nervous system and provide lots of support for the body. How will we get out, Miss Frizzle? The day is almost over. Oh, silly. We always have a way to leave. Today, we will be leaving through the skull. There are lots of holes there. Fun fact, Miss Frizzle. Did you know that there is another hole on infants' heads? When a child is born, the skull bones are not completely formed, leaving a crack in the skull. This crack is called the fontel. But Tiffany is not a child, so she doesn't have one. So today, we will be leaving through her ears. As we leave through the ears, notice the cartilage around the ears. It allows the ears to be somewhat flexible.